So we've got two good things to report. Number one, we're still doing pretty well in the league. And number two, this came today. It is my version of the, the Tom FM 5K t-shirts. You can get it just over there. There's a link there, link in the description. As by the point, it took quite a lot of effort to do. But yeah, mine arrived today and it looks really good actually. It looks a lot better than I thought it was going to look. Um, the actual 5K and logo bit is in the right area, which I'm very, very pleased with because it's a bit awkward placing it on the t-shirt. So that's arrived for me today. So I'm going to be wearing this quite a lot, uh, probably in most videos now, so you'll probably see it all the time. So if you want to grab yourself one of these, then make sure you do head to the link in the description, teespring.com slash tomfm5k to get yourself one of these and uh, become one of the first 5k subscribers officially in a t-shirt version, basically. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Today we have got two games for you. We've got a Europa League game against Stade Rene and then the first real test of the Premier League season against Liverpool. As you can see probably from the screen already, looking at the table, we're, we're still top of the table by two points. So I'll show you what's happened since you were last here. It's been pretty, pretty incredible, I've got to say. Uh, last time you were here it was Napoli and West Ham. Uh, immediately after that we had our first loss of the season, but it was in, to Arsenal in the Carabao Cup. Uh, we played quite a rotated side actually. I thought that yeah, Arsenal were going to play a very rotated side, so I thought I could get away with doing it as well. Turns out they played a very, very strong side. You know, Sam Taylor was playing. He's the best player in the England squad, for example. It was a relatively even game, I've got to say. So it does give me confidence when we play Arsenal later on in the season with a full-strength side. So that's nice to see. Um, after that, we played Strugglers Tottenham. They took the lead, but then we scored four afterwards. So um, that was a good game. We scored four goals there to beat them 4-1. Uh, Zult Wagram came next in the Europa League. Uh, we beat them though 3 0. A hammer time with two and an own goal uh, sealed the win for us. We then came against bottom of the table Fulham. And not just bottom of the table Fulham, bottom of the table Fulham with only 10 men after 29 minutes. And yet we could still only draw only just as well. They were winning for most of it as well. Hammer time scored late on to uh, equalise. But it was uh, an awful performance, a poor performance. And I don't understand how we didn't beat them um, bottom of the table Fulham with 10 men. It's beyond me, I don't know. But that's the only game we've not won in the Premier League division so far because the next game we played was against Birmingham and we beat them 4-2. We were 2-1 down for quite a while until the 70th minute and then we just scored a few goals and uh, that sort of sealed the win for us. So a good win against Birmingham there. And what that does mean is we are top of the table by two points. I wasn't expecting this. However, if you take into account who we've played, we've not played anyone in the top 10 yet. Um, at all. Uh, Tottenham are just scraped into the top 10, but everyone else has been in the bottom 10. Um, so it's, yeah, it's it, it's not been the, the worst start for it. It's been relatively easy, actually. So Liverpool, who is currently in fifth, that's going to be the first real test of the season, I've got to say. First up, though, we do have Stade Rene in the uh, Europa League. Now, they beat Napoli last time out in that game. So they beat Napoli 4-2. So Napoli having a real torrid time, uh, whereas we beat Zult, which means we've got breathing room at the top of our group. Uh, we are three points clear with five goal difference, which is pretty nice. So if we beat Stade Rene today and maybe those two draw, we're well on our way to qualification for the later stages of the Europa League. Because I'm feeling quietly confident after we absolutely thrashed Stade Rene 9-0 in aggregate last year, I have gone for a relatively rotated side uh, Reynolds is going to come in as our cup goalkeeper, but also because, um, where is he? He's down, Barry Scherzer, he's been making mistakes, I've got to say. He's slow to start games. When we've conceded goals, often it's been early on in the game and it's like they're only one shot on target for a long time. That's what he's doing. So I think if we swap him round, maybe Reynolds will be a bit better in these opening 15, 20 minutes of the game and maybe we won't concede so many then. But Cholk, Kobayashi, Benteke and Ferreira coming as that back line. So it was three changes arguably in that back line. Bacholk and Masovic sort of change a lot, but these two, Ferreira and Kobayashi, aren't regular starters now. Uh, Corinthians and Pandolfi come in to a new look midfield. Jimenez is on the wing on the grounds that I think is he injured again. Um, no, I think he's okay, actually. He's just looking a bit tired after the last game, so we thought we could give Jimenez a little run out. Uh, Diaz in the middle, as Shalon picked up a nasty knock, actually. I think it was a, another ankle. We've had lots of ankle injuries, I've got to say. A lot of ankle injuries. Uh, La Cassic comes on the right, so basically a new look attack midfield trio as well. And then Hammer Time is the only real regular starter that's starting today, because hopefully he's going to bag in plenty of goals. All right, kickoff is upon us here at Grant Brown Park. Hopefully a sellout today for the fans as we kick off today's game. Early corner for us then, early on this game, and Benteke hits the crossbar very early on. It could almost be in a start, just like we had against them last season in the first knockout round, I think it was we played them. Yeah, it was the first knockout round we played them. We beat them 9-0, so I am quietly confident coming to today's game, and I think I say it, I say it like 
we shouldn't be winning it. But actually, when you think about it, if we are currently top of the Premier League, last season we finished seventh. You know, seventh in the Premier League is probably equivalent to top of most of the leagues that are in the Europa League, for example, as Hammer Time comes very close there. For example, us coming seventh in the Premier League is probably similar to us coming above Stade Rene in, in League Earth, for example. So, you know, it's kind of us beating them, I've got to say. Us coming seventh in the Premier League is probably similar to us beating Zult Wagram to the title of the, the Belgian Leagues, for example, I'd imagine. I think we do pretty well in, in Serie A as well. So I think I wasn't given enough credit last season thinking about it. Because we got to the final, I was like, oh, how, how we got to the final? We can't do that, really. But we probably can do, because the Premier League has got such strength as Pandolfi scored an incredible goal from very far outside the area. That was a decent shot from a bad angle as well, so fair play to Pandolfi. So I don't think I was given us enough credit, basically, um, considering how strong the Premier League is compared to other leagues. It's still the most reputable league in Europe by some distance, I think, actually. So I think we've just got a lot more strength in our division and our side than we actually think we do compared to other European sides. So I do back us to get to the semi-finals this year. The board wants semi-finals and I'm going to back us to get there and I will back us to get to the final as well. I'm going to back us all the way um, unless we get like Man City. But saying that, Man City below is in the Premier League so far this season. So it's it's difficult to say who's going to win it. But I think we've got a really, really strong chance of getting to the final once again as Hammer Time puts it over from point blank range. How did he do that? If anything, I'm disappointed that we've only scored uh, one goal considering we've had 15 shots and seven on target defensively we're doing very well we're limiting them to nothing right now but I think we should be a few more goals ahead to be fair we've had some good chances as well so we're being a bit wasteful we've got another chance now though as Diaz puts a great ball through to Hammer Time who's through and the keeper there is once again to make a decent save the keeper has been very very good for them I've got to say today um, at the same time though Hammer Time hasn't been brilliant although saying that he's getting on the end of every ball he's getting his shots on target I can't complain too much he's just on a 6.4 apparently so he must be doing something fundamentally wrong, which is probably not putting the ball in the back of it. That's probably it, I've got to say. It's going to be a late attack now for Stade Rene. Their first shot on target. Is it going to happen? No, Reynolds collects the ball. So we're probably going to launch an attack of our own now as we try and lump the ball forward. And as you can see here, Napoli are beating Zulk Ragram, um, which does that mean that we're going to be qualified now after three games as Diaz scores a great goal there. Hammer time gets the assist and Diaz slots in the back of the net. He's been really, really good so far this season. He's valued at like 34 million now, Diaz which does make me think I need to sell him for that kind of money. But at the same time, if he's on fire, well, we have to keep him, don't we? He's, he's in my opinion, still the best attacking midfielder in the Premier League. As I was saying, though, um, the table, as you can see here, if they are on three points and we're on nine points, does that mean we've qualified already on the grounds that it's all done on head-to-head -head records? So actually, no, maybe not, I don't know. Because maybe, actually, no, I think we have to give more than nine points to qualify. So ignore me what I'm saying there. I feel like if... We could finish on nine points, but lose all these games by more than we won them by, and then they'd overtake us, I think, if they managed to win their games or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, either way, though, we're coming forward once again. Jimenez now trying to get himself in the game, puts into Hammer Time and hits the crossbar. He's been so unlucky today, Hammer Time, I've got to say. He deserves a goal for all the work he's been putting in. I'm not too worried about making substitutes this game because we probably will rotate the side entirely for the, uh, the next game. I think the only player that will take off is Ben Teke, uh, just to make sure he's okay for the next game. But other than that, we'll probably rotate... Most players, I've got to say, we may take off Diaz, um, but I'm not quite sure who can come on for him um, on the grounds. Can can Corinthians play up there? He can, actually, but Diaz has played very well, so we may as well leave him on the pitch. It doesn't matter too much. We'll make that one change. We'll be fine. Dad Brené now trying to come forward with a free kick, but it's clear and Lacassic now with a chance to come forward. He's not had many chances recently due to how well Despacito has been playing, but he's still a very useful player for us as Hammer Time again comes very, very close. He's had so many shots on target today. It's just that... They've either not been good enough or the goalkeeper's been there, basically. I think the goalkeeper's been very good as well as they get their first shot on target, Stab, I think that's their second shot of the game and Reynolds makes a very comfortable save. He's been had nothing to do all day, Reynolds. He's been probably very bored right now standing in the uh, in the goal there. But Jimenez coming forward now. Will Hammer Time finally get one? He does finally get one. I'm pleased for him because he deserved it. It was coming for him. Jimenez with the assist. Delighted for him. That is, He's been trying so hard all game, bless him. He's on a, a nine now. He's, I don't know if you saw that. He jumped from a 6.6... .6 to a nine if that's what a goal can do for you then hammer time you're in fine i don't know what i'm trying to say with that despite when <laughs> despite his beating stab a 3-0 they are going above zult wagram so i presume goal difference wise or is it head-to-head -head record i don't know either way napoli are probably thrashing zult wagram right now but it does mean that despite losing they are going into the automatic qualification places now stab so fair play to them well done that's full time we've beaten them 3-0 here today 
I'm interested to see what the what the other result was with the oh my god, why do I always hand it to my assistant? And Napoli only won one nil, so I guess it is head to head record or something like that. Zolt Ragram beat Stad or I, mean, I don't know why Stad have gone up and they've gone down. It's all very weird and complicated. I don't know, but Stad despite losing, have gone up to second in the group. Right, I'll rest these players anyway, um, just because I want to give them a little rest after that game, because we have got the Liverpool game in three days' time, so I do want to rest some of those players in case we have to play them. Uh, Benteke and Hammer Time will play, of course, so we have to make sure they're rested. Oh, more gate receipt records, £900,000 for that game, so it was a sellout, obviously, which is which is pretty good going. That does help with the uh, overall financial balance right now. We're doing pretty well, £127 million, um, and that is usually because I'm selling players quite a lot as well, so we don't really spend much more than we actually have to in a way if that makes sense basically we nearly break even every single uh, transfer window so that's kind of why we can just keep raising the money sponsorships come in as well which is quite nice that helps a lot on this of course this new stadium a lot more income from match days and things like that so we're doing pretty well financially right now um maybe one day we'll splash the whole 127 million on a player but we'll have to wait and see first i'd rather splash that on more stadium expansions really if i'm honest with you i want to get a 50,000 seat stadium that's what i want that's what the stadium capacity can be or well, 49,000, but I'd like it to be that one day. So here's some other Premier League fixtures that have been going on. Man United did beat Crystal Palace, so they temporarily go first, but if we beat Liverpool, of course, we go back into first, which is quite nice. Right, so we made a couple changes to the lineup against Liverpool. Of course, this so far for us is going to be the biggest game of the season, so we have to win it, really. Uh, but Chalk, Patino, Benteke and Gomez start that back line. Jalapeno comes back in, but Jordi Mertens is injured, so Pandolfi stays in that uh, other midfield position. Uh, Morala and Despacito come back on the wings, but Diaz and Hammer Time still maintain that sort of middle position there. So hopefully... We'll get a win today with this lineup. And kickoff is upon us. For whatever reason, we're playing in like a white today when we're at home. So we should be in red and Liverpool should be in like a black, I think. Now, as I said before, this is the biggest game of the season so far. It's the first real test we've had this Premier League season. Um, and so while I am surprised that we're top of the table, in a way I'm not because we've not really played very good sides so far or teams that are doing particularly well. As I said, we've only played Tottenham who are in the top 10 and they're only 10th themselves. So that's what I mean by this. Liverpool, different kettle of fish. They're a decent side. They're a Champions League side. And um, if we can beat them today, I'm going to say it does cement our credentials as Despacito comes close. It cements our credentials of being a Champions League top four side this season. I think if we can beat Liverpool today, we can really push on and think, yeah, we can become you know a Champions League side this season as Reynolds makes an incredible save there actually with a one-on-one -on -one with their striker uh, Steve Thompson of course you remember him from the uh, England stuff earlier on we've got a chance now then with Gomez as he puts it into Despacito who puts his cross in right at the byline but the goalkeeper does just about collect it ahead of hammer time he played it short though the goalkeeper and um, there's a lot of pressure now Despacito makes a decent tackle and hammer time 13 minutes into the game Puts it 1-0 back in the net. That all came out in the wrong way. I meant to say put it in the back of the net is 1-0, but it, it came out how it did. Either way, though, that is a fantastic start for us. It does put us, again, two points clear of United as things stand with plus 19 goal difference. Of course, we spoke about how we need to stop conceding goals. We've conceded a lot last season. That probably hampered us. We probably could have done better last season if we had a tighter defence. And we seem to have fixed those defensive problems right now on the grounds that we're just, we haven't conceded many, really, and we're scoring quite a lot still. So that's probably why we're doing so well. Liverpool now with a chance to try and come forward, though, although they give away the ball cheaply as Diaz puts it forward towards Moralha, who can't quite get it start, gets it just instead. He puts a decent ball up to Bellotti now with, um, I think it's Patino trying to chase him down. It gets into Thompson, who hits the post. We've, we've got away lucky there, I've got to say. We've got away lucky. Liverpool trying to come forward again now. They've put the ball into the area and it's been put across to Steve Thompson, who does level the scoreline for Liverpool. I've got to say, Liverpool, stat-wise, have been the better side today, which does make me think, ah, perhaps this is slightly worrying in terms of the teams we're facing. Like, perhaps we're not as good as I thought we were. We won these first opening games very easily, but as I said, they're not in the top 10. Now we're coming against the sides that are decent. They are walking over us a little bit, I've got to say, like this Liverpool game here. We're, we're being dominated, I've got to say, at home as well, which is slightly worrying. I've got to say, no no one on either side has played particularly well, really. No one on either side is really standing out as, as a good player. It's been a fairly drab match, I think, so far, if you're a neutral. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to go assertive, far from police from what I've just seen from this side. But hopefully that'll, that'll perk up in the second half as Liverpool kick it off. I want to see us be more competitive. I want to see these stats more level. I want to see us score five goals, ideally, really. Free kick for Liverpool, then the first highlight of the second half. And the shot from distance rattles the crossbar and goes over. I think, actually, Reynolds made a decent save there, actually. So, 
fair play to Reynolds, that was a good save. The corner comes in, Despacito clears it now. Moralha has a chance to launch a counter-attack, although his ball forward was atrocious. I can't decide if I like him or not, Moralha. Like, I don't know, for 43 million I was expecting a lot of player and he's not really shown it too much yet, it's hammer time. A shot from distance, forcibly saved by the goalkeeper there. He's coming closer and closer, it's hammer time. Like, look, I mean, he has been the worst player on the pitch today, Moralha, and I'm 6.4. Why? I don't know. I I was expecting a lot from him. And unless he scores now, their man's been sent off. So fair play. He's won a free kick for it. The, the highlight must be for the red card. But he's on a yellow card now. He's being shown by the referee. He's been sent off. Obviously, he's a defender as well, which is quite good for us. They've had to bring Alexander-Arnold on. So they've only got the one striker now, which it doesn't really change much because Alexander-Arnold's amazing. So, well, let's encourage the boys in these final 20 minutes. Is there a change to be made? I reckon it's Jimenez for Moralha to come on the pitch, I've got to say. Diaz not played amazingly well, but Shalon's injured, so he we can't really change anyone. That's the issue there. I reckon Corinthians comes on for Pandolfi as well, because he's not played too well. Can he do much more than a Carrillo or Playmaker? Oh, not really, so we'll make those two changes, I think. Maybe that'll change the game for us. Maybe it'll change it for Liverpool, I don't know. Hammer time on the ball now for us, and puts it to Despacito. Despacito into Jimenez. Oh, he had so much time. There was two players there they could have easily put it in the back of the net, but they somehow messed it up. Somehow messed that up. And now we've got a chance, or they Liverpool have got a chance now from the goal kick. Actually, thought we got the interception. Although Jimenez does win it back for his hammer time. Driving forward into Diaz, but it's been tackled there. And now the goalkeeper's clearance is a poor. So we've got it back straight away once again. Jalapeno, Corinthians, hammer time. Through to Diaz on the edge. Of okay, let's ignore that shot. That was... Poor. I'll definitely take a draw against Liverpool, I think. I think at this stage of the season, and knowing how good Liverpool really are, I would take a draw against them. However, uh, you know, we're pushing forward now. They've got 10 men. It's the, it's the perfect opportunity to score another goal now as Hammer Time's been put forward. And what did I say? We got that goal. Hammer Time with his second in the game, assisted by Diaz again. What a player Diaz is. As I said, he is the best, he is the best attacking midfielder in the Premier League right now. I've, he just is the best. And now, potentially another chance for us as Corinthians plays it forward to Jimenez. Jimenez now tackled but wins the ball back himself. What a play he is. But Chulk now, can he get a ball into the area? Not quite, but he's working it forward now. Diaz into Hammer Time. Hammer Time, Diaz. It's it's Coutinho now. Diaz. Oh, there was so much going on there. I couldn't keep up with it. Now Belotti can come forward for Liverpool. Um, we're still only one goal ahead though, of course. So a goal for them does peg us back again. But Corinthians has been put forward by Hammer Time. Puts his cross into Jimenez. He hits the crossbar, saved by the goalkeeper. How has he not scored? What happened there? What happened? All right, Jalapeno on the ball in these closing moments of the game. Can we get one more goal just before the full-time whistle? It doesn't look like it, though. We won possession back, though. So there's still one last gas opportunity for us to extend our lead. But we don't need to. It's Lincoln to Liverpool 1. And what did I say? We said we need to level up the, the stats at half-time. And what do we do? We level them up. Incredible stuff, that. Nine games played. 8-1. One drawn. Zero losses. 25 points. Two points clear of Man United. Four points clear of Arsenal. And 10 points clear of Crystal Palace in fourth. I've, I said it before we kicked off the game. If we beat Liverpool today, we are cementing our credentials as a Champions League top four side this season. I'm not taking anything less than Champions League now at this stage. I'm not taking anything less. Well, if you look at it this way, we're basically a quarter of the way through the season. Like, in the in the remaining three quarters of the season, if we throw away a 10-point lead in the top four, then we are rubbish, I've got to say, I think. Right, next episode then. We're probably going to go to Zolt Wagram versus Man United, or, or us versus Zolt Wagram and uh, us versus Man United. Someone did ask for the Napoli and Man City game, and I said we might play it, um, but... As you can see, we're already miles ahead in our group. Man City aren't a very good side this season. They're down in eighth. It probably depends on where they're going to be. If they get into the top four, by the time that game comes around, we'll probably do it. But as it stands right now, I don't think they're going to be a big test. I think Man United are a bigger test. So I'd rather get onto that game, really, for the next episode. Um, and then it means we can just sort of... We'll have less episodes overall this season. Uh, and then we can get through more seasons more quickly, if you know what I'm saying. So... I think next episode is probably going to be Zork Wildgrown versus Man United, but it could be Napoli Man City. We'll have to see how Man City do in the league. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it because it's been a very, very good one. We're still top of the Premier League. We're top of our group. Things are going brilliantly. It's it's fantastic. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you grab one of these t-shirts as well. Down in the description, link down there. And I will see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.